Okay, so I am Elizabeth Chesters and I am from Mendeley, for those of you who don't know and is maybe sort of applicable later on. Um, Mendeley do productivity software for academics and researchers and things like that, which means we're sold through universities in UK and America, so you can imagine we come under the many laws that Leslie and Lizzie suggested earlier. So one of the things I wanted to do is just talk a, bit, a little bit about the strategy that we have taken and the steps that we have taken to um, get business, to get the attention of the business, you know, understand what they needed from us. Yes, we can say we need it accessible, but on a business level, what are the types of information that they need in order to action it? And then we go through the proposing the strategy so we can give them a higher level of detail, but then what are the finer grainy details that we need as well? And then we can't just be the one person in the company. Right now I am, there's like one and a half of us. Uh, so I say that because like someone is like half doing it as well as the other you know, full-time job, same as myself, but it's a lot more um, ingrained and I've been there longer as well. So we definitely can't be the only person in the corner just banging the drum. Um, and then finally, when we have things in place, we can start to really encourage a team buy-in so it's not just us and not just the ambassadors. So one, how do we get the attention of business? Well, it does start a little bit by them really understanding the fact that they will be sued and we're not a small company. We do have to be by the book because we do get told in a lot of other areas that we are very suable um, because we're not poor. Um, so when you're talking to the business, really understand like how it really fits in with them. So, you know, how does it fit in with the business goals? Some of our goals in particular are about the number of users that we have. So when we start to bring up statistics of like how many people are disabled from memory, because I've presented this about seven times at work, um, in America there's around 40 million and in the UK there's like 12.3 million people, which is like 19% of working age adults have an impairment. When we present our number of users that we want, when we're already seeing in two of the countries and we're a global audience, that, that is what, like 52.3 million users that we're cutting off just by not being accessible, they start to listen. Um, and you can then say, you know, how much is it costing you? What is, if we were to include our, I mean, hypothetically, over 50 million users, what could that actually bring us, like in terms of revenue or engagement and things like that, and not being sued? Um, we also take into, so one of the stretches that we took was, it's really hard to get businesses' attention, but sometimes really looking at the ways or the times that they're already listening. So I work in-house and we work agile. We have like Friday briefings. So I presented this like for only 10 minutes, uh, not exactly this one, but um, another one which got the attention of business to say like, this is the status where we're at, this is why, this is the value, and really speaking the business language and getting them in a place where they already are so you don't have to, it's not about encouraging them to be there in the first place because they're already there. It's sort of like a captive audience, but you make it work. Um, other times as well is I've presented this at the end of a sprint demo. So for those who don't know Agile, it's every two weeks we present to the business what the team have delivered and afterwards when they're already there, you can present you know the status and get them that way. Um, and then you can start to showcase the goals and, and things like that as you're doing it. Number two, propose the strategy. So now that you have their attention, what do you do with it? Um, you have to document it. So a lot of the times if it's not in writing, they're not really gonna pay attention. Also, they're busy people. They have to have it in writing so they can go back over it when they can. Um, and then you can start to put forward the business costs. Like what do the business need to know? Like how much is training going to cost for people? This is not basic knowledge, you know, um, and also the um, like how much training would cost and how much time that would take as well. Um, so it's nice and easy. So we, in our documentation, we have like an exec summary. So we have like, these are all the points that we need. And then we have like on the finer detail underneath. So it's like, yes, we need training. Okay, how does that, how much does that cost? How much will that take? And then really start to narrow down what it is exactly that you need. So. Um, the, when you say like accessibility, you start to really need to demystify it because like when you say we need to accessibility, that's great, that sounds amazing. Um, but when you actually start to look into it, it can be quite overwhelming. Um, 
And for business, when you use the term quite simply, of that's just, you know, we need to start accessibility, they really start to, oh, can't you just make it accessible then? And that's, no. Um, the 61 criteria in the WCAG guidelines, which we all know is not a joy to read, they're a necessity, but they're not joyful. Um, so one of the ways that we have done is in our proposal, we have tried to narrow it down, just like we've done with browsers, like the assistive technologies that we would like to support. So we've gone through over which common browser and screen reader um, pairs that we should test for. And then you can start to hand it over to keyways and to business so they can start like um, starting up costs for how much the software is going to use but at least it narrows it down to like from 61 criteria and the word just make it accessible to actually what we need to do. Number three, recruit accessibility ambassadors. So sometimes it does feel like for a year and a half I've been just banging a drum in a corner hoping that people would listen and it's finally um, get in somewhere but uh, we have recently hired someone to actually help with this and it can't just be from designers it can't just be from developers um, so we've seen this in other parts of the business um, in one of our law ones so for those of you who don't know Mendeley is owned by Elsevier and Elsevier is huge um, so in one of the law companies they also do this um, and actually watching the BBC Global Awareness Accessibility, something, what, that's a long ass name. Um, <laughs> in their accessibility event today, they were also going through how they have accessibility ambassadors. So yes, we can provide training, but yes, that is costly in terms of time and money. Um, so we need to provide at least some people with that in-depth knowledge so that they can go and champion it in different parts of the business. Um, and it also needs to be a, across different roles um, and different products as well. So in Mendeley we have, um, I think it's like five different products and things like that. And we have a lot more teams. So it's like choosing people from different roles in the same teams and across the different products. And then one of the ways that you can use this is by sharing those knowledge as well. Um, so you start, you can use different parts of your business if you already have people. So we have like one accessibility guy for the whole of Elsevier in Dayton, Ohio, who's a busy man. Um, so we try and regularly meet with him to get best practice and we've started documenting this as well. So it's a lot easier to share that knowledge. And then you're speaking to the business of like really using the time and the money that you're really trying to get budget for to be like, this is how we're using it in an effective way. And then the time buy-in. So using your ambassadors. Um, again, just re really demystifying what accessibility means. Some people are really put off because, you know, there's 61 criteria and they just look at the guidelines and just like, I don't want to read that. Um, so it's understanding what it is. Um, and then the value of it. People don't really, un don't really like doing something if they don't know why they're doing it. So really being able to share the user struggles. So. I didn't get budget for recruitment, so I asked on Twitter for people, you know, academics who have impairments, just like some quick understanding of academics who use our products and their struggles and just sharing things like quotes. Um, and we, off by chance, just by chance, we had someone with dyspraxia come in and already we're using quotes from that video to really share like the struggles that they mentioned. And even just like our marketing merchandise that we give out for our user testing doesn't have lines, so they can't. Uh, use it so even our merchandise is not accessible so people who with dyspraxia this woman complained that without lines they couldn't get the the clustering of and they found it difficult to write and um, so we were able to share that with marketing to aid that empathy as well um, and it works with developers as well and one of the really labor intensive ways but it's been very effective in actually getting it built is by documenting it so we have been trying to push for accessibility to be in the process but also treating it as something like our other nfrs our non-functional requirements such as like analytics so you know it has to be on the requirements it has to be you know, documented, we go through and we define all the tab order, all of the keyboard triggers, we give them links to W3C uh, authors and the WCAG so they understand why, what exactly the behavior should be, and that's quite a good way. 
And if there is ever an argument for if a UX show should code, it is accessibility because the implementation has a huge effect on UX and it's really understanding things like ARIA labels. We define all of those, we define the descriptions for all of our icons and it's, yeah, it's going pretty well. So actually get it done. And it doesn't get a design QA if it's not accessible.